Hey, yo, yo, what's up, Prince Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, uh, we got comedian Wally Collins, and here we discuss respecting the older generation, uh, stopping patterns of abuse before you start. We talk about the Chris Rock and Will, Will Smith smack debacle, and uh, we also talk about uh, some really deep stuff about relationships and marriage and commitment. Um, don't forget to follow us on the Patreon. Check out the follow, uh, support us on the YouTube channel for the clips on the YouTube. Follow our social media, all that good shit. And don't forget, you can get me um, if you need to consult with me, DanteNero.com. Click on consult, consult and you can get time. Yeah, and the uh, Patreon.com is where we do the bonus episodes, the listener mail, and all that stuff. So extra content if you sign up for Patreon. And this episode, we continue with uh, the Patreon episode. We continue with Wally Collins, where we talk about. You know that what sacrifices you have to make in a relationship, uh, balancing your career and family, and also what Dante thinks about Kevin Samuel. So that's all on the uh, Patreon episode. But until then, uh, jo- enjoy the show. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, GYBB? Get your balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do to sexual revolution? Being podcasted and I am excited. Um, uh, we got a special show today. Now I know I've said that uh, five hundred times, Harry. Five hundred mm, uh, times before. Five hundred and twenty or so. Yeah. yeah. I know I've said it that many yeah. times, but this time I mean it. Finally. Uh, finally. Uh, finally, you, sincere. We got. We got. Well, we'll get into it. how you feeling first. How you I'm feeling. Good? I'm feeling. Uh, what are they saying? Fresh and fit. Is that what the kids are saying? I'm both no, those things. That, that's just a no? podcast. Oh, uh, damn it. All right. All that's right, where I get all my information <laughs> on what the kids are doing now. What the the kids, podcast. What the kids are doing. It's just YouTube and then the Joe Rogan experience. So I feel I'm fully informed to do anything. I'm ready so for you, anything. So you, you, you say nigger a lot. Uh, anyway. No. <laughs> Not anymore. As I've learned yeah, from right. Joe Rogan, now you can't say it. Duh. Right, now. I, I got it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. 2022 um, is different times. <laughs> let me introduce my guest. My guest, uh, good, really good friend of mine, dog. I've known this dude 20 years, 20, 21 years. Oh, and, one of the uh, shooters, baby. One of the shooters. The, 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 the original MTV kid when MTV was new and fresh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, entrepreneur, funny, funny dude. Classy, classy dude. Um, Give it up for Wally Collins, y'all. Give it up for mm. Wally Collins. Yes. What you up, could, baby? You could tell Wally's classy because he decorated his office there with a book on the shelf. You should see some of the backgrounds since we've been doing this via Zoom. <laughs> well, this is um, I do a lot of uh, podcast guest work, whatever. So this is my book right here, by the way. Nice. So, smart. Really? Yeah. yeah. Plug so, the book, Wally. What is it? What is it about? Oh, it's uh, here. We give you the. You see that it's called the you never know book of encouragements nice and um basically it's uh encouraging people to live a regretless life mm. and uh you know based based on my life because you know i don't you know i was i was, an, I was a building designer architect then i got you know, and i was music and comedian you know and moved to, you know went to new york city had all these successes and i did it because you never know yeah. and um so it's the uh all inside here they're all encouragements oh yeah, and it's all written on the right side because there's nothing written on this side because basically tell you, I don't want you to look back. I want you to look forward. Oh, that's so, dope. Oh, smart. That's smart. Dope. That's I'm a very sure. architecture's way of designing a book, by the way. <laughs> you want to leave room. You want it to flow. You want this book, yeah. the words, you, you want it to flow. You got to let the light in. You got to yeah, let exactly. the light in. Light, yeah, right. You need the light. You need light. <laughs> so dope. I remember, I remember the architecture because when you came, when, you were, when we were actually working in the studio, you were looking at the the skylight. The, the, remember we were talking about? The, yeah. the, the, I have a skylight that runs through the whole. The light comes in through the whole house, but there's so much you lose so much space from that, right? Um, because it was in, you know old architectural stuff or whatever. You know, you know how it is. Uh, right. Um, but yeah, man, it's good to, good to see you, Wally. Last time I saw Wally, Wally getting ready to choke some young comic. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, be, he was being disrespectful. I mean, he was actually gonna, uh, 
he's going to smack him because he was doing some alopecia jokes. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before they were popular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but some kids, some, you know, yeah, we were talking about the, you know, uh, so there's there's good and bad in in what what's happening with entertainment and stuff like um yeah you 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 know I feel like uh, the the that everything is online and everybody's watching everything on an iPad on a phone opens <coughs> up opens up the ability to um you know like I like I always say this with all the streaming you got a lot of black directors and different ethnic directors and. And and producers and stuff, they get an opportunity to tell their stories because at one time or another, just having black people in the movie made it a black movie, and a right. black movie was a genre. Right. And and now there's black horror films, Latino horror films. There's love, you know, like there's a there's an array because the because contextually there's so much. This we need so much more content than we mm -hmm. ever did before, and because of that it's open. On the other hand, uh, we were talking about the kind of the disrespect you get from from young comics is because I remember when I would when you would go to a comedy club or even when you would go to the cellar or you would go anywhere, there was an a, there was a hierarchy. Yes. And so and because of the hierarchy, you came and there was a culture that you were indoctrinated into. And because you were indoctrinated into a certain hierarchy, there was a, um, you just, you, there was a way, uh, there was a, a way that you came and you were taught, you were taught to how to act, right. um, and how to kind of pay your dues and keep your mouth shut until you pay your dues and you earned your, you earned your game, which is interesting because it, it's funny. Like, I don't know if you know, we had a whole there was a whole I don't know if you heard about the whole thing with T.I. and Godfrey. No. Uh, so T.I. started doing comedy and yeah. he's been doing comedy for four for about four weeks. And okay. Godfrey was headlining in Atlanta, which is T.I. City. T.I. was doing a deal with somebody who actually owned the whole theater and uh, said, oh, you're doing comedy. You should go up kind of pushed him to go up but Godfrey had already did an hour and 45 minutes wow. and so to kind of go up you know there's just an uh, uh, an etiquette that you don't go up after the headliner right um because there's a certain level of of respect you, or, and sacrifice you make to become a headliner um and, and, show, and show flow too actually you know? absolutely yeah that that's that makes the show better or whatever and I, I and even though you know Godfrey kind of Godfrey kind of made um he kind of let he you know he was like Ti wants to go up so Ti went up and I did a half hour after the headliner right and I get it because Ti is Ti and Atlanta's his city so you might have had to do that but I you know instead of you know I felt like. Instead of saying to T.I., yo, I know this is, this is not really how we do it. Usually the headliner, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, in the future, even if you want to come back tomorrow, you're welcome to come back tomorrow. But I'll give you some time in between, right. you know, before yeah. a headline. Beat your ass. Right. right. But see, Harry, uh, Godfrey didn't do that, but he went and he kind of went on his podcast and he bitched and moaned about it instead of bitching and moaning directly to T.I., Mm. T.I. And, and, and Godfrey has been extraordinarily gotten really big online mm -hmm. uh, with his impressions and stuff. So it got back to T.I. Okay. And T.I. came back and it was a whole thing we blew up mm. where it blew up where he was like confronted him. And then I was on a lot. We were all so uh, 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 Godfrey had Ali Sadiq and me come. And then he had a all the members of, of the five families had to <laughs> or the five families of comedy <clears throat> had and, to uh, convene. And, um, you know, we, we talked about it and stuff. And, and one of the things that I was trying to explain to T.I., because, you know, I don't I, I mean, I mean, I, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I mean, people are worried about the goons. 
I am a goon. You know what I mean? Like that. Like people call me. So, but it wasn't even that. I just think if you speak to somebody in an honest and respectful way, that I, I if they don't, if they don't respect that, then they're the ones that got the problem. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it was a whole thing that blew up online. And How long was it? This is what Harry two weeks, three weeks uh, ago. At this point, it's about three weeks ago that it went down as of this recording. Yeah, but, yeah. You can. It's still the remnants of it is online. And yeah. Shit. And um, I had a guy. This guy K. It's how little people care about comedy beefs. It's moved past. Right, right. Comedy <laughs> beefs don't get the respect they deserve. Well, look, they're almost past this Oscar smack. I mean, I, I give it another day, and there won't mm. be, and people won't be talking about it no more. Right, right. So I think you know this. The news cycle moves for. So basically, but what I said was that, you know, the, the and I was just giving him 20 year advice. Mm. I, and I was saying, you know, um, you have to understand the economy of time. Uh, the, when you when you first start and you're nobody, you get five minutes right. and you don't get seven minutes until you rock. Rock the five minutes. They yeah. might, you don't get, and if you, you stink, don't, they'll cut that five minutes short. And they'll cut it rooms. down to four. Yeah. Three. Yeah. 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 So. So. Uh, um, and then when you get you don't get the 10 until you get the seven and all. And so. But what it does for you is the way the things. Are, there's a reason why it's like that, because you learn the economy of time so that now when you have a joke that you're telling that, you know, really would take you know, an amateur or like T.I. two minutes to tell a joke, mm -hmm. I could do it in 11 seconds, right. you know, 10 seconds, right? right? Seven seconds, because I understand the economy of time. And I was saying that, and he told me, you, I'm done talking with you. I, 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 I'm, your journey is your journey. I, I was like, oh, all right. So, so it's, it's interesting to me how people are so confident about something that you, you do so. I I don't. I'm I'm actually writing a book now. I'm finally writing a book. Okay. Uh, it's uh, getting published by Karen Hunter from uh, Sirius Radio. She yeah, did. Yeah. She did uh Corinne Stephan's book. So okay. this is kind of dope. Um, and she's on my ass. You know, like get it done. Yeah, yeah. Like she's not playing. Um, right. and I've been. You know, people have been taking taking the uh telling me to write a book, write a book, write a book. I, and I never wrote a book because I always thought to myself, you know, scholars and philosophers write books, you know, doctors write books. And, and mm. um, but this goes to the old school thinking, yeah, but you know what I mean? Also Wally, Donald Trump Jr. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of, a lot of crazy people write books. I, I think you have to understand, and especially people in your who don't read, write books now. Don't yeah, you? yeah. Um, I think you have to understand the whole the the philosophy behind books. It's part of your legacy, and it's you're documenting your life, you're documenting your thoughts, uh, yeah. you're documenting your journey. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a lot of people out there who are doing that, documenting who really shouldn't be out there doing that. Right. But in your case, you have such an interesting life, and you have in, in such an interesting uh, uh, um, uh, aspect. Mm -hmm. And um, this book that you're writing is going to be around long after you're gone. Yeah. And, you know, and those who don't um, like, for instance, um, Felicia Collins, who's the guitar player, Letterman. Uh -huh. And we were talking and, I'm, and I were just I was just talking, you know, we're talking about how, you know, she's part of history. She's the first, you know, black woman, you know, mm -hmm. to play and all these different artists she played with. And I asked her, do you have a journal? She's like, no, I don't. And I just tripped. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, you know your journey is like there's so many black women, young girls, you know, not actually black, but they want to hear this. Who want to hear that, you know, and yeah. and want to hold on to that book, you know, and go to those pages in, for those inspirations. <clears throat> Same thing in your case. Yeah, there are, you know there are a lot of you know younger you know uh, 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 people with uh, with goatees and bald heads yeah, who yeah. want to you Thank know you. saying you know I this path seems so difficult, right. you know, and you you know been there done that. Yeah, so yeah. why not? you know, drop that off, you know, to that young kid or that young one behind you say, hey, there's something, this is going to help you on your journey. So it's almost like a responsibility that you have right. to, you know, the the, the ones in coming back. And also the responsibility is, is basically saying, you know, our history, American right. history. Right, right, so, right, right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, don't think it's a scholar thing. I think it's a responsibility that you have. 
to uh, yeah, fair enough. It. Fair enough. I ain't got no choice because she's on my heels now. So it's oh, okay. It's, good. Uh, it 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 the the inception of it was I was on doing her show, and uh, some dude and you know I was I was talking about how anytime a relationship doesn't work, it's really I always say it's it's the man's fault. And mm. the reason why I say that is not because I think that all men make the mistakes, but I think that what happens a lot of times as men, because we want to get the pussy, we're willing to overlook things and to let these red flags go by as opposed to stopping and saying, oh, this is this is unacceptable. You know, right. Right. I, I remember I was dating this girl and and, uh, and and she gave me the finger and I said, uh, don't she put it. Uh, well, <laughs> if it was that easy, you know, uh, but she, she gave me the finger and I said, look, don't, don't give me the finger. And she was like, oh, you getting all sensitive. I go, i am explain something to you. It's disrespectful. I don't like it. I don't want, I, I don't speak to you that way. And I expect you to not speak because I have the maturity enough to know that the buck has to stop there because it disrespect never happens and then it gets better mm -hmm. it's, it's never a one-off and then or even if it's not meant to disrespect it bleeds into other things and the way you argue and the way you talk to each other yeah. and when you're angry then you start taking liberties with things that are okay to do right. yeah and right. if you know that that boundary is has already been checked um when we're not fighting when we are fighting you know that that's mm. that's just not somewhere you go, and so even if the relationship doesn't it's the same, work, it's the same boundary of uh, if a girl like slaps your slaps your arm playfully or whatever, punches yeah. you in the shoulder playfully. And I gotta go. Yeah. Don't do that. Oh, why yeah. not? Why not? Because I would never do that to you. Number one, and then number two, if you're in a fight and, or if you get in an argument, and then now it's going to get physical because you think that that's okay instinctually, mm -hmm. can't happen. Right. That's how abuse starts. Physical abuse starts. Those are the little red flags, and it's the yeah. tiniest and tiniest of red flags. But you cut it off before it it grows into something else. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Hey, Wally, what did you? Let me get your take on this Will Smith Chris Rock thing. What do you think? Man, I can't tell you. Uh, yesterday, Monday, I've got so many text messages and phone calls, and I did yeah. like three podcasts. Um, I did an interview on CBS. Um, you know, talking about this and, um, I, I have different angles on this, but well, it's definitely a more nuanced situation than I think people try are trying to make it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're saying that he should have been more sensitive, blah, 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 but okay. I'm going to go that angle and saying, Hey, listen, Chris Rock was being Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. Chris Rock got there from doing jokes like that. Right. He didn't do anything out of the norm. He didn't go any extra. He just did what Chris Rock did. Right. Also, the Academy, um, the production company, has they have to screen all those jokes. Right. Everything is is, is okay. Right. It's, it's so he got the green light. So go ahead. Do your right. thing. So when people are saying, oh, he should be more you know, sensitive, whatever, whatever. What is, you know, what about Amy Schumer? She said some foul things, too. But you know what? No one to walk on my stage and slap her. So you, you, you don't know, you know, what's going to set people off or what, what is considered offensive to the point it's too much. So, yeah. So no one knew that was too much. So right. it's, I don't want to say it's Chris Rock's fault, but everything was just going to plan. You know what I mean? Like I said, there was nothing extra about this. Nothing was said. All right. I don't think it was said, but it doesn't seem like it was intentional to right. like just keep digging. All right. So then that reaction, of course, and I and everyone, I think, across the board agrees on this, that re, that action does not merit, um, you know, a bad joke. You know, right. that, does, that's, that's, that, that does not equate in any in any right. equation. You know, absolutely. So um, and then I'm going to go the other angle, another angle where, I mean, where uh, Will Smith is talking about. He comes from love. And if he's, you know, this person that comes from love. The way to handle that situation, if, you know, if I was a person, you know, coming from love and he said that joke, I would have reached over, kissed my beautiful wife's beautiful head and made sure the camera saw me say, I love you. You know, don't listen to that or something like that to show 
right. that, you know, no matter what is said, I'm protecting you. I'm showing right. that love. Right. I really think that everything that he tried to, uh, Will Smith tried to um, display or try to show people, it all went away. Yeah. All those years of manifestation, law of attraction, yeah. all that, all that love. You Discipline know? and all this, and I'm gonna. If I'm running on a treadmill, you gonna have to kill me before. Right. I, da, 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 this. All gone. All yeah. gone. It, it, it all now is back to that one that level. You know mm-hmm. where. So now you know you get insulted, and or you find something that's insulting, you're gonna react that way. And like you know, I've been talking to some like some some major actors because you know I want to get their take on it, and they all say, well, you know what? It was just too much. He had a breaking point. All right. He had a breaking point. Yeah. Now, does that mean that when anyone has a breaking point, they can just go off in, in, any, in any place? Kyle yeah. Rittenhouse, he had a breaking point. Right, uh, right. You know, it goes on and on and on. So, January 6th was a breaking point. A breaking point, right. right. So, you know, do you, do you want to do that and go, no, he had a breaking point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, man, I think there's something more to that. That someone, you know, and then taking responsibility for the other right. man goes taking responsibility for your actions. Right. So he didn't apologize to Chris Rock. He apologized to everybody else. Yeah. They're an accepting speech, but not Except the, the guy Rock. you smack. Yeah. And then he did it the next day. And obviously that was like, you know, a PR thing. And was that sincere? So that's, you know, that's making me. I like, didn't hear the, the apology to him. What was the apology? What did he say? Or oh, it was, it was on Twitter. It was written. He, it wasn't verbal. Yeah. Uh. You know, yeah. and so you can you can tell, you know, between the lines, look at my mom told me to say sorry, mm-hmm. you know, but, mm-hmm. you know, you can tell when someone's sincere, a sincere, sincere sign coming from the heart. So, yeah, man, it's there's like I said, there's so many angles and so many uh, ways to look at this. And then, you know, coming next February, how is the Academy going to handle this? Right. Are, you know, are they going to have no hosts? Are they going to have no one presenting? You know, are they going to have security? You know, like this, like the Source Awards now. Yeah. You know, and then hold on, another angle. You know, these are two black men. What is yeah. what is what is that sending out to to the world? Yeah. Yeah. And, it was, and it produced by a black man. Right. Right. You know, and this and is the was, first time. This is after the the two white Oscars thing, and this was the response right. of this to let a black man produce it, and then and this happened on his watch, right. which is, I think a lot of people don't take into consideration but you can't you know you know like i know as a black man you can't mess up no you you don't have that you don't have that ability no and i and i tell my you know i tell my white friends you know and they it it just they're like what are you talking about it's not about race and i'm like you know what i I just changed the subject because you Mm, you don't you don't not to you guys it isn't yeah (laughs) you you don't even know how deep that is yeah that you know uh you know like for instance if obama you know only served one term that would mean only black black people are only good for one term as a president. Right. That doesn't mean that Barack Obama only served one a term. man, the individual. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, you know what we do. And when I was, you know, in architecture, I was the only black guy there. You know, I know I represented every black person on the planet. You know, you know, if I if I ate a chicken salad every week. You know, they're like, oh, black people eat chicken salads every every every. Is lunch. that a thing? Is that a thing that they do? Yeah, exactly. You know, so I know, and so that's what I'm saying is that, you know, we do we do have that responsibility, uh, and I hate it, but it's put upon us that we have to represent ourselves. And, right. And there we go. And so, also, the the other <laughs> look that's interesting is uh, if you want to know what the world of show business is like and why Harvey uh, Weinstein was able to do what he did. Hmm. Uh, as far as power goes, it's all right there in the fact that Will Smith assaulted somebody and because he's very powerful in Hollywood and very successful, got to sit right. there and then had people consoling him after he Wait. slapped Chris Rock. Anyone. Anyone. Yeah. Well, that's that that aspect of it is already predetermined, meaning yeah. like they've already sealed those envelopes. But let me ask you a question. Let me yeah. ask you a question. If it wasn't Chris Rock, it was Amy Schumer and he walked up there and smacked her. They would have. They would have you changed think he, the rules. You still have got that Oscar? Absolutely not. Come they on, can't. They which, legally which, can't do anything about that. Which it would have been yeah, awkward. You got that Oscar. Come on. So now. here's here's when Harry's half a white dude. No, 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 no. <laughs> I get you, but at that point, it's in motion financially <laughs> no, for them. No, they don't give a shit. They wouldn't let him accept uh, it. He would be out of the building. So was the, so now. was the vi- the voters' rights uh, bill. That's you know? true. Oh. So you, there's always this thing where you're changing the See, rules. The, well, whatever. The difference is the voters' yeah. right is actually on the books. 
that's not hidden. You know what I mean? That's not that's just well, done so in was, public. Yeah. And it's yeah. being done in public. I mean, uh, George Floyd was done in public. Oh, I agree. That's my point. Is that all that? There's no secrecy to any of that shit. That's done just but out I'm in saying, the open. Even in the, in the aspect of that, we couldn't get a George. You couldn't get a bill. You you couldn't even. I with agree. That yeah. be, and so yeah. what we're talking about is nothing is safe. And the black people understand that nothing is sacred. None of it is sacred. No doubt. They can change the rules at any given time, whether the envelopes are sealed or they're not. The envelopes are yeah. no seal. You, all you got to do is look at Katanji, uh, Katanji Brown, the, yeah. what they've, Jackson, uh, was it Brown Jackson, right? Yeah, Brown Jackson, right. Brown, Katanji Brown Jackson, what they're asking her if babies are racist and, and, and then oh, yeah, you, have yeah. a, you got, and you got Kavanaugh where he's going, I like beer. Do you like beer? Do I like beer? I I like to boof me squeak donkey dick Dave we we did the devil's triangle uh, you know like yeah. this is the level of of and they're trying to you know to correlate it in the same way I have a few Harry you got any other angles on this no, before? I mean I think we're gonna have similar angles other than for me it, it's just the notion of this is a guy first he was laughing about it right so he was fine with it and then I think he noticed that is this is all a lot of pent up anger and aggression from not dealing with his own marriage and then mm -hmm. being tired of kind of looking like a fool and then having to overcompensate to defend his wife so he doesn't look weak in front of her and the world. And again, you know, it's interesting that he would do it on Chris Rock, of course, after after everything, by the way, that's happened publicly and that she said publicly and done publicly to embarrass that dude. It, it's the equivalent of taking your girl to a frat party watching her grind and and uh, dry hump everybody on the football team. Then you punch the hundred guy uh, the hundred pound guy walking in the door because he said nice haircut. Yeah. Right. It's yeah, taking yeah. it out yeah. on somebody else who 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 is not the problem. I don't know. In my in my eyes. Yeah. 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 And well, it's a bad look for every aspect involved. The culture as a whole acting as a whole. The whole thing him it makes him look bad it takes away it diminishes from his winning that oscar it's a, just a bad look overall I, yeah. so, so i got a couple of a couple of angles to this which i think is interesting number one um would he have smacked the rock in the mouth probably not right mm -hmm. uh there's a good chance he wouldn't have smacked the rock uh you know, maybe he might have grabbed Terry Cruz's balls. I don't know. Mm. That's possible. But 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 he definitely wouldn't have smacked the rock if rock if the rock did the joke. So there's that. You gotta keep that same energy. You can't be so so for him, um, you know, and I've heard people say, you know, they were so proud of Chris, the way he handled it professionally. Chris ain't got no fight in him. Like, if he gets smacked, that's what happened. He right, just right. got smacked, right? So, and especially not against Will. So there's that. Right. The other thing is, like you said, is you you got it. You, you have somebody who his his wife didn't even admit that the problem with August and the entanglement, all of that had happened, and basically they aired their own personal marriage and their whole relationship on the red talk table about this yeah. entanglement and everything and basically humiliated she never apologized she basically said i ha i needed somebody to make me feel something because i wasn't getting it from you she she was very candid she was her 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 her, her veins were filled with ice water it, there was no real empathy about how he was feeling um and he was like we get married we going to stay together da 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 da, da. And so this is again why the show, it why why there's a need for this for our show is because we always talk about authenticity, credibility, and empathy. Number one, you're telling you you're saying you have an open marriage, but you don't want an open marriage. You can't mm. say I have an open marriage and then all of a sudden your chick is fucking other dudes, you fucking other chicks, and then you get mad about it. Right. You can it, you can go, hey, I thought. That this was i was thinking about this uh, i really can't take it let's let's renegotiate this yeah. but you can't do both you gotta you can't be this person is supposed to be so worldly when you ain't built like that you yeah. you know i've had situations where i've been with girls where i swung but i was always a soft swinger meaning you want to fuck chicks you can fuck chicks 
um we could both fuck chicks <laughs> um, um i'm gonna fuck chicks but I, I don't want no dude fucking right and 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 people go well that's unfair they go well listen it's all unfair it's also unfair every time we go out to dinner i pay you yeah. know what i mean so that nothing is fair we decide what our non it's whatever boundary you're comfortable with and if they want in on that that's okay and if they don't want in on that that's then they fine don't have too. to do it i'm not yeah. mad at you yeah. it's understanding what your non-negotiables are and then never negotiate so right. i think he was dishonest about about what he could put up and put what he could put up with and what he couldn't put up with mm -hmm. he he also created this facade as if he was this worldly dude i know people that have read his i didn't read his book but i know people that read his book and one of the things that he talked about in this book was that in 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 west philly he was the only dude in the house that couldn't fight and mm. so he became funny because it was kind of a way of saving his ass right what's interesting about that is, and that ultimately he's he um he really created a scenario where he he has these different characters basically this is what the book is about how he has these characters that he put he plays these characters at different times depending on what the situation is and that's right. how he learned to survive as a young man and uh it's also it's sort of like you know a guy who's a joke thief even if he's a talented comic and he's a joke thief how does he stop stealing jokes after he's been stealing jokes for 25 30 years yeah it, it it's just not it, it you just haven't even you haven't even built up the muscle to fail hmm. so that you so that you can fail so so he talks about these multiple kind of which is which is interesting because as black people this is something that maybe um something that you probably didn't think about how is black people code switch all the time Oh, yeah. Like you cannot operate as a black man in America and not code switch. You yeah. have to have your white voice. You have to have your. You got to know how to how to how to sell it. How to. <laughs> yeah. You got to have your laugh and all that. There's because, an aspect of that in the Latino community too, for sure. On, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah how oh, you absolutely. behave. How you have to behave at work because you have. That's the corporate America. Right. You can't go all of their homes. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so. So Low riders that. Are for the weekends. We all know this. <laughs> so, so you know that the the code switching of that, and there's always the code switching present. This is the same thing that happened to Tiger Woods, who um, who basically had created this straight dude golfer, straight dude thing, and then he was running around with trashy strippers all over fucking trashy strippers. Yeah, and we're talking about twenty. What was it, like eighteen, twenty chicks that yeah. that came down on him. And and the, what happened was, you know, he's driving an Oldsmobile. Meantime, <laughs> meantime, he's like, I never said I was that dude. You guys right. told me I right. was this dude, and I, I, you know, I needed the check, and so I go, yeah, I didn't say no, but I didn't say, I didn't say yes, but I didn't say no either. Right. And then you, when you come out that you a hoe, and you you running around chasing stank. Get a little stank on the hang down, you know, or <laughs> you, 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 you know, this is what happens when this is why authenticity is important. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, speaking on that is also part of this, this idea. Nobody of looks at, uh, at Charles Barkley and goes, Hey man, you're not being wholesome enough. <laughs> right. You know right. what I mean? Like for, if you're, if you're out, if you're a dirtbag, quote unquote, from the get go, you don't have to worry about the world finding out you're a fraud. Or yeah. that you're putting up a facade. And th this is exactly why I don't lie. I don't lie about the pimping. I don't lie about the stripping. I don't lie about my exploits or whatever. I'm just, I'm a dude who's living and trying to be a better person. That's <laughs> it. And wherever I am in that journey is, is truthful and honest. Uh, if you ask me about the past, if I did it, I'll tell you, especially if the statue of limitations is already, <laughs> is already passed. Um, <laughs> So there's that. Um, so in a sense, you have this guy who has these this lofty, lofty kind of expectations from people that he he feels like he needs to live up to and validate this over and over again. And he's created this this prison, you know, you know, it's a rich prison, but it's still a prison. And you know what they say? The golden handcuffs, they're gold, but they're still they're still handcuffs. Right. And um. 
so so there's that so you have this situation where you really haven't expressed um how you felt about this entanglement this humi humiliation yeah. this emasculation um that you've done and then we and now and then this is building up and then you well we're going to stay together because we're going to build this together and that's not really what you want to do right. she didn't he didn't slap chris rock he wanted to slap jada that's the smack was for jada really that's the the matter and and chris rock made it easy to do so like you said or, or like you said i said the same thing amy schumer wouldn't have got snapped but yeah. Yeah. neither would ricky of ricky gervais have gotten smacked. yeah yeah you're not as a black man you're not gonna go up and because somebody told a joke and assault and this is what people i don't think that people understand that the the ricky gervais was a brutal on the oscars Woo! Baruch, than gloves, but yeah. Called, uh, yeah. Well, whatever he, I mean, he did a bunch yeah. of things, but he was called them pedophiles, and, yes. I, and and the fact that he didn't call them pedophiles, he called pedophiles the way British state is really. Well, in, all, in all fairness, <laughs> what language is he speaking? Who started it? It is English, <laughs> so he might be right. In Fuck all fairness, <laughs> pedophiles. All fairness, let's remember the name of the language and who's speaking it. Let's to be honest, but, I don't care what you say. I'm not going to say aluminum, so oh, I don't Jesus. care what you say. Oh, Fuck my that. It's, it's aluminum. So, um, <laughs> the, but would, would Will Smith have smacked Ricky Gervais? No. A, and had he ever smacked Ricky Gervais, what would have been the ramifications of him walking up and smacking a white man on, on, on the Oscar stage? Yeah. How devastating would have been? I mean, of course, we know a woman. It would have wouldn't have been okay for it would a be the woman. End of his career. But uh, but him smacking a woman. Yeah. It had been fine. It would have it would have not been fine if he smacked Ricky Gervais. And then you also not gonna smack somebody like The Rock, who mm. you, you got this smoke for you too. How about that? So wait a minute, Dwayne Roberts. Dwayne Roberts. Yeah, yeah. Dwayne the Rock. Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson's got he's got a problem with Will Smith. No, no, I'm saying the point is if, if it was the was, rock host. If he thing. was doing and said something, Will would not run up there and smack that dude. Yeah, gotcha. Because you don't want to get your, your you want to get broken. Right. So you know, it's 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 really here's the other thing. He everything up to him smacking him. Even if he would have went up on stage and whispered in his ear, keep my mame's wife out of your yeah, motherfucking yeah. mouth, yeah. even that would have been okay. Yeah. Right, yeah, that right. would have been fine. Yeah. Um. Even if he he could have also said, "Hey, listen, this is a touchy say. I don't think it's tasteful, and I, I'm gonna need you to apologize to my wife." Even yeah. that would have been okay. Then you have black women. Uh, I'm not talking about Yamanika specifically, but oh, talking Jesus. about how black men don't black men don't stand up for. For black women, this that when eighty five percent of all black men are with black women. So yeah, I mean, there's this 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 ultimate narrative. But if you're gonna be dishonest about um, forgiving forgiveness, if you are really not gonna forgive, if you forgive, you gotta forgive and move on. Um, but you can't forgive. But but he had created this such a lofty kind of highly evolved man that should be well here's the weird thing here's the thing i believe that will smith has evolved from when he was a young man i Absolutely. think what we saw at the oscars was not will smith i think that's the facade is the character that went up there and slapped them across the face and started screaming i think that's not will smith i think that was a facade put on because he's got to stand up for his wife in public i i have another theory mm. i i've noticed that when will smith plays a character he embodies that character when he was playing ali all his interviews were kind of like this gregarious kind of like, um, like this bigger, like this bigger person because yeah. he, he was, he was Ali. So like, you know, not when he was, you know, in front of the camera, so to speak, the, the you know, the, shooting the film, you know, when he was off camera and when he was not shooting, he was, was he still was that. Yeah. And I really think that he was still embodying Richard Williams in, mm -hmm. in that, you know what I mean? He was still that Richard Williams character. Because I really believe that that's something Richard Williams would do. It's going right, to right. back someone saying, that's hey, interesting. Listen. Yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah, I really but... think that I really think that Will Smith was embodying Richard Richard Williams. That's that's my theory. Yeah, that's, but that, I mean, that's he an was, interesting. It is, except for me when I watch the playback on it. And we've all watched it like this is a Bruder film over and over again. But... I can't watch it. I have not watched. I have not. I have not watched. Well, 
one of the things that you might see is after Chris Rock tells the joke, he Will Smith is laughing and he's not like a little not like a huh, huh, like he is full on laughing like, well, he's yeah. like, hey, it's all in. You, dip, and you, you could dip, argue you know, that, all right, I, you know, I was in. You, you know, dip, was you dip in and out of that character because, I mean, you know, I play characters, you know, to sound like, you know, I'm just a great thespian. But I know that, you know, if you're going to be convincing, you know, even before, you, you know, they say action, you got to get into that character. And then yeah. when they say cut, you know, you got to roll out of the character. It doesn't necessarily stop like that. Right. Right. So I'm sure. Thinking, yeah. You know, and so. You know this. Well, you know what. You know what would Richard Williams do if he feels his family is being threatened? It's interesting. You know? And then that's basically what he did. He came out as you know as Richard Williams. Yeah. And then he turned back around. You know, did the action happen? And I really think that kind of took him out of character. And yeah. as he turned around, and walked around, he was Will Smith. Yeah. Kareem, yeah. I, Kareem Abdul Jabbar wrote like a really long post about it which was amazing just breaking down every aspect of why it was not good the whole thing was bad it's bad for african americans it's bad for hollywood it's even bad for women it just shows his wife can't handle a joke she can't uh fend for herself he goes, mm. it's just bad all the way around yeah. uh, you know it's bad for pacifists the whole thing yeah it's just a bad look overall and it, just it, some it, shit she, that, she also yeah. could have made an effort to put grab him and pull him back like don't go she could right. have done that she could have grabbed him by the sleeve and stopped but him. you know what but no one really knew that he's gonna go up there and smack him either. no but even, but even chris Rock actually at least of all chris rock because yeah. he thought he was just playing around yeah because chris ford leaned forward to say yeah. you want to tell me something yeah so yeah had his hands behind his back and he yeah. leaned forward so it's like there's a but this is a what's also interesting about this is you know the, the the this this talk of the fact that um, how women are not empowered. Uh, she literally had him on a remote control with a look, with a, shot him a look, and he set him liter- off. Set him like, follow, What do you want me to do? What What do you need me to do to feel yeah. comfortable? And so. This is because something- in that moment, and this is what men put themselves into in that moment, it's better to go on national TV and slap Chris Rock uh, at the Oscars than it is then to, to ride in that car her. ride home at her going. So yeah, you just he, did he nothing. He his options. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, I guess I'm slapping. I guess I'm He's going to jail for somebody. assault. Yeah. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's it. But this is what happens when it, when you're in a relationship and you're dishonest you're dishonest about who you are you're dis- dishonest about what you're okay with what you're not okay with you're going going along and you're you know and then and also you got sometimes you got to go uh, if you're too sensitive or too like every every guy is not built for every girl hmm, there's sure. i know women that are man eaters like where a dude is just too kind and too nice, and if he's we, you, you go like I mean, we we were you know before we were on, we were talking about somebody that we both dated that was a succubus, would just suck the mm. you know this girl that we, uh, Wally and I dated. I said not I, at the I, same time, not at the, not the same time, yeah, yeah. not at the same time. But <laughs> I asked him afterwards, "Yo, you know this chick you you dated?" This? And and Wally and I quote Wally said, "Yeah, I learned so much from that relationship." He goes, "I've never in my life thought that a woman could be that selfish." <laughs> like that that was his takeaway. It was like I I, I it, it it widened my scope <laughs> how awful and how selfish. A woman could be. I never even thought that was, and I and I and I always remember that how um because because my thought was is it is it me, like is, 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 I mean I, I mean I can't be, like am I this off? Is my read this far sure. off? And right. every once in a while you'll ask. You go, is it me? Am I wrong? Am I off on this? And I'll yeah. be like, no. If you're asking, I know you. Yeah, if yeah. you're asking, you're generally not off. She was she was she was putting up a certain facade about her. Yeah. You know, and Sick. then behind closed doors, it, it was it was just so awkward. It's almost like it, 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 that cold switching, you know, like, oh, yeah. we're not doing that now. Oh, you yeah. Know? You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear cut. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Know, yeah. 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 How's you? How are you and your lady doing? Um, She's we're good. She's at work right now. Not here. So. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be 20 years this year. Really? Congrats, man. Yeah, Congrats. Thanks. What have you learned from the 20 years? I mean, or, or has it just, or had you kind of learned what oh, you I, needed to learn before you got in there? Um, man, how long is this show? <laughs> we can get whatever you get in. Let's get it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> if you are committed, if you're t- truly committed and saying that I want to do this, yeah. I'm going to say that being married is a very, it's very, very uh, emotionally expensive. It costs a lot emotionally. Mm-hmm. And there is, it's not, you know, because when you're saying these vows, whatever, you don't really think that the things are going to happen, you know, sickness and health and mm-hmm. rich and poor and all, and all those things do happen. Right. And so now it's a matter of we're going through this storm. Mm-hmm. Are you taking the lead or am I taking the lead? Right. You know, and sometimes your ego's got to step back, you know, and let this person do it. And this person's going to do it and fail. And are you going to, you know, just ridicule them, like ridicule them, like, oh man, I told you to do this, da, 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 or mm-hmm. step back. I got that. Right. So it's, it's, it's all this learn, it's this learning and people change too. Their attitude towards things, like, you know, that they're, um, you know, when you, when you got married, met them, they had this, this dream to go this way. And then once you get married, something may happen. What happens to all of us? You think right. we can go this way, you know? And then you're like, do you still want to be married to this person? Do you still, do you still want to be part of this person's life because they're going in this direction? And then you know, there's always hell. <clears throat> hell. You yeah. know, your partner's health may fail. Yeah. And so now are you going to stay with this person because you said in front of God, in front of family and friends, through sickness and hell? Are you going to stay with this person? He owes me $5, though. What'd you say? God, God owes me five dollars. Oh, all right. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's one. It's 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 a thing where if you're committed to this person, people gotta understand commitment, you right. know. And um, yeah, and, and and I think what helped me is that I travel a lot, and so you know we don't see each other as much, mm-hmm. and I think that helped a lot. But you still, it's still work. It, it is, it is still work, you know. And um, yeah, it, it like like I said, all those other aspects, and then when COVID happened. You know how, and you now you're stuck in this. The intensive, it's much so much more intensified. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and you, you, you then like you know how do we handle that? You know, luckily I live in this I live in this great apartment. You know, my, my apartment is 18, 1,800 square feet. Mm-hmm. So she actually texted me one time to meet me in the living room for lunch. Uh-huh. She, was on the, she was on the west side of the apartment. I was on the east side. I, I right, like right. it. So I'm right. like, you know what? I I was like so grateful for this apartment. <laughs> you know? Right, 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 right. I wouldn't right. see it for hours. So anyway. But um, who are you, Batman, Wally? What's going yes. on? The <laughs> East Wing. <laughs> but you know, but it, it it is one of the things where a marriage is that people change, and people don't, we don't understand that part. People are going to change because you evolve. You yeah. know, because I know I evolve, and so now is this person going to stay with me because I don't want to do this anymore? Or I want to do something else. And same thing with her or him. They don't they don't want to do that anymore because they right. want to come here. Right. And also, you understand women. You know, it, even women, how how they work and their, and their function, whatever. You know, so yeah, man, it, there's a lot to it. And um, think I tell people, really think about it. Really think about you, you want to do this. You know, because mm-hmm. it's, it's a commitment. And now, not only you, every decision that you make is going to affect your partner. Right. Same thing with them. Every decision that they make is going to affect you. So you sure you want to do this? Right. Right, right. I feel like as a man, for me, it, the, the hardest part is that my decisions do affect somebody else. So now I have to think about somebody else all the time. Right. And in reality, she wants me making most of the decisions. Most yeah. of the time, a woman wants you to lead, whether consciously or subconsciously, to a degree. Right. And that becomes hard because now you got to make decisions for her and you have to think about what's best for her benefit in spite of the things that she might say that contradicts the other things she's requested as well. You're preaching, you got, brother. Yeah. yeah. You got to think about yourself, herself, and then herself again. It's yeah. crazy. And then if you have kids. Oh, forget it. Oh, yeah. I, can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine. You got kids. How many you got? Well, no, we have kids. We, have, we just have a seven pound Yorkie that keeps walking. Oh, that's around. easy enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah Jesus. Yeah. That, even that. He, even that. You, yeah. I mean, still, but uh, having a kid there, at least at least you do Yorkie. You could leave alone or they can leave you alone for a little bit. But right. Right. The kids. Now you got to make sure you got kids. Now you got to make sure somebody's not dying. Yeah. That's what kids are is a sack of a sack of flesh that's trying to die at it's any given moment. Potential death, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all they know how to do as a baby yeah. right <laughs> out the womb. 
<laughs> Wally, uh, we're going to do something for the Patreon a little. Keep going. But plug yeah. your book and plug anything you want to plug or anything sort of. The, oh, know. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, this is my book. Yeah, this is my book. It's called The Never Know Book of Encouragement. Uh, you can get on. Uh, why? Why? You never know. Uh, why? You never know. Oh, OK. Did you not? Oh, man. <laughs> my mother gave me advice. She gave me three words. You never know unless you try. Uh -huh. And so I just said, you know what? I'll just make it into one word. You never know. And that was my mantra for all the things I've done in my life. Right. right. Um, also, um, big news that, that I'll announce on your your uh, your podcast. Lincoln Center has started a, a comedy department and uh, mm -hmm. I'm curious. Wow. Yep, your boy's curator for uh, comedy. Lincoln Hook Center. me up, baby. <laughs> Get me so, in there. We're, what we're doing right now, um, we're doing an uh, eight-week series in the summer, and they're actually building a comedy room. And wow. um, Yeah, it's pretty cool. And so now you got to understand, this is Lincoln Center, so there are a lot of, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People. Yeah. So it's got. All right, well, I guess I won't be working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, they'll fit you in by 2027 when they're fully comfortable. So, so I, I so yeah, the, wow. The people that I'm that I'm suggesting, they kind of like vet, it's you know, it's a process. But um, but I I produced two shows. They're called Jokes and Jazz. I don't know if you know about that. No, no. But yeah, it was um, it was jazz and and, and comedians, and um, both shows sold out. And so they offered me the gig uh, earlier this year. And yeah, you know, I jumped at it. I'm like, yeah, definitely. You know, because I, mean, I can't think of anybody better to cure. Oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that is right up Wally's what, so, right up the avenue. The series, I'll clean it up for you, though, Wally. Okay. I will clean it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But the series starts uh, January. Uh, it's going to be Wednesdays, eight Wednesdays in the summer. Mm -hmm. It's going to start. Sorry, it's going to start June 15th. And um, you'll be hearing you'll be hearing about it. Um, we'll be posting it, you know, on uh, my Facebook, Instagram, Wally Collins, W-A-L-I. Wally is the Wynton Marsalis of comedy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and um, yeah. you're going to start doing heroin like Miles Davis. Are you? Wally? <laughs> no, 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 I can't. I can't. Oh. <laughs> It's, too but, late. Uh, like said, it's very exciting. And um, congrats, Wally. You, you deserve it. You thank deserve you, it. Thank you. So, yeah, you're the first one that I. Uh, that I, uh, that I announced on the podcast. I did a podcast, two podcasts yesterday, but I said, nope, this is for Dante. Thank you, nice. bro. <laughs> when did you actually find out? Uh, I found out in February, I believe. February. Okay. Yeah. That's so yeah. dope, man. I'm happy for you, bro. You know, I love you to death. Hey, and I, and I, and, and you deserve the absolute best. Hey. Uh, you good dude. Like, really good dude. Harry, talk to me real quick. Uh, you could check out my stuff at Harry Turjanian all over the place. YouTube, uh, TikTok. Uh, subscribe to the TikTok. That's where I'm doing most of the new stuff. But most importantly, uh, sign up for Man School 202 on Patreon. We do bonus episodes, listener mail, and we're going to do some bonus with uh, Wally right now. So yes. only available on Patreon.com. Uh, you know me. Google me, bitch. Uh, you know what it is. Uh, don't forget DanteNero.com. Click on consult if you want to book time with me. Don't forget our YouTube channel. Don't forget the Patreon. Really important that you do that because you help us keep doing what we've been doing. We're nine years in, Wally. Nine years doing wow. this podcast. Um, wow. uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Um, I love y'all, man. Check us out on Patreon after this. Peace.